Okay, you two. So for this lesson, we're going to be talking about chylomicrons. Now, before we get into this quite daunting pathway, the first thing you have to understand is that lipids are non-soluble. So therefore, we need a mechanism in order for our body to take in these lipids and transfer them in order to be either stored or to be used using fat as fatty acids for fuel. So what our body solution is to use what are called chylomicrons. So now let's get into what actually how, well, how a chylomicron is formed. So as you can see, dietary fat and cholesterol is taken in through our GI tract into our intestines where the fatty acids can be converted into triglycerides. Also, the cholesterol can be taken in through the intestines and be converted into cholesterol esters using the enzyme ACAT, which is all occurring in the enterocytes. So therefore, you're left with two new products, triglycerides and cholesterol esters. Now these two products can then form into chylomicrons. Now as we can see, we have an apolipoprotein here called ApoB48. Now this protein is important because this is what allows this chylomicron to be released from the intestines. Next, the chylomicrons travel from the lymph to the blood. Now once it goes into the blood, obviously in the blood we have capillaries. So in capillaries, there's a protein called lipoprotein lipase. Now lipoprotein lipase is activated by another apolipoprotein that is carried on the chylomicrons called APOC2. Now APOC2, I think about C2 with capillary. So therefore, once lipoprotein lipase has been activated, now this chylomicron can actually be uh, broken, can actually have its triglycerides, which it, which it contains, to be converted into fatty acids and glycerol. So now what we have is a chylomicron with a lot less triglycerides due to being broken down by lipoprotein lipase into fatty acids and glycerol. So now this chylomicron becomes what is called a chylomicron remnant. And as you see with the chylomicron remnant, we have another apolipoprotein called ApoE. And this apolipoprotein is important because this allows the chylomicron to re-enter back into the liver using ApoE receptors. So as we can see, chylomicrons are important in order for fuel utilization and storage of dietary fatty acids. But what if we want to know how exactly do we use our hepatic, hepatic fats for fuel utilization and storage? Well, what the body does is the liver actually will release these fatty acids, or sorry, our triglycerides in the form of VLDL. Now VLDL is cool because it can actually be harnessed using this, can actually harness fatty acids using a similar mechanism as chylomicron. So VLDL can travel into the blood, and just like how we saw with APOC2 and LPL, the triglycerides can, contained within the VLDL can be converted into fatty acids. Therefore, this is going to be causing a decrease in triglyceride levels in the VLDL. Now here we have a protein called CETP. Now this protein, or enzyme, sorry, is very important because I'm actually going to talk about it more when relating to HDL, but we can cover it now. So CETP actually is sort of like an exchanger type enzyme where the VLDL gives its triglycerides to the HDL in exchange, the HDL gives its cholesterol to the VLDL, causing a decrease in the total triglyceride level in the HDL and the VLDL, and an increase in the levels of cholesterol in the VLDL. So therefore, we have a different composition of VLDL, which is what we call IDL. Now, IDL, similarly to LPL, goes under what is called hepatic lipase instead of lipoprotein lipase to also release fatty acids. So now we have IDL, which has much less triglycerides because more have been converted to fatty acids, and therefore you're left with a structure called LDL, which as we can see has a lot less tri triglycerides as fatty acids have been continuously been dumped out and an increase in cholesterol. 
So in first A they say LDL stands for lousy, which makes sense because it's lousy because think about this. This pro this uh, this structure has a large amount of cholesterol inside of it. So therefore, this protein can get stuck into the walls of the capillaries and as a result can lead to atherosclerosis. So finally, but if this does not occur, since it contains the protein ApoB100, it's going to enter the capillary via the LDL receptor, unlike chylomicrons, which enter through the ApoE receptor. Now lastly, what, what, what we're going to be talking about is actually a good type of lipoprotein called HDL. Now HDL in first aid they call healthy. Healthy equals HDL. Because HDL is cool because they refer to it as a reverse transporter in that it actually gets sent out into the body and collects cholesterol and brings it back to the liver, which I think is pretty neat. So this HDL can actually be secreted by both the liver and the intestines, and it contains a protein called ApoA1. Now ApoA1 is important because it's going to activate the enzyme LCAT, and LCAT causes the nascent HDL, which only has ApoA1, to be converted into the mature HDL, which actually has ApoE and ApoC2 as well. Now if you think about where exactly did ApoE and C2 come from, well, let's, let's take a look at our VLDL, VLDL pathway. See, VLDL gets converted to I, IDL and then LDL. But as you can see, LDL does not have ApoE and ApoC2. So therefore, we can see that ApoE and A, ApoC2 are returned back, or should I say recycled, to the HDL, because the HDL is what is the original carrier of the ApoE and ApoC2 proteins. So as a result, we can also see here how the HDL is involved in this VLDL and IDL and L LDL exchange of the cholesterol and the triglycerides. So I hope this clears up some confusions because I have been getting a bunch of questions about people saying, you know, this is a very uh, difficult concept, but the best way I like to think about it is that to actually think about these apolipo proteins separately and think about the mechanisms afterwards. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much, and good luck studying.